When it comes to launch games for any console, you could never be too sure of how those games will turn out. Though there have been, of course, several standouts over the years, often games struggle to find their feet in these generation transitions and end up feeling either middling or downright atrocious. That's something that's happened quite a bit in the history of PlayStation, something that we hope won't happen with the PS5, and in this feature, that's what we'll be talking about as we go over the 14 worst PlayStation launch titles of all time. We'll only be covering the consoles in this feature, so don't expect any PSP or PS Vita entries. Angry Birds Star Wars There's nothing particularly wrong with Angry Birds. It's a lot of fun, perfect for a mobile experience, but that's the thing, it's a mobile experience. Angry Birds Star Wars being among the games the PS4 launched sounds like a joke, which it sadly isn't. Sure, it's not like this was even close to being among the flagship PS4 launch games, but we doubt anyone bought a PS4 thinking Angry Birds would be the first game they'd play on it. Contrast. Compulsion Games' debut title Contrast sounded and looked like an excellent concept at first glance, but much like their next game, We Happy Few, the game itself failed to do it justice. Though it deserved praise for its atmospheric setting, it was dragged down by technical issues and bland puzzles. That the game's reception reflected that lack of consistency is not surprising. Knack You knew this game would be in this list, didn't you? Knack is the banner lord of infamous PlayStation launch titles, and for good reason too. Never mind that this was, bafflingly enough, the first ever PS4 game Sony showed to the public. What made that worse was that Knack was, bluntly put, a bit of a mess. Though it fancied itself the next great PlayStation platforming mascot, Knack was instead defined by bland, uninspired, and shallow gameplay. Knack 2 was an improvement, sure, but that's not really saying much. Street Fighter the Movie Street Fighter the Movie was a game based on a movie based on a game, and it was not being ironic about it at all. Beyond the ridiculousness of that very idea though, if it had been a solid fighter, like Street Fighter games are supposed to be, everyone would have been perfectly happy with it. Instead, it was essentially a low effort reskin of Super Street Fighter 2 Turbo, and somehow, thanks to balancing issues, technical issues, frustrating controls, and more, it was a much worse game. Power Serve 3D Tennis Nobody may have expected Power Serve 3D Tennis to be the shining star of PS1's launch lineup, but those who bought the game expected at least a functional and enjoyable experience. Power Serve 3D Tennis was not that. It felt slow and sluggish, it had frustrating controls and frustrating camera angles, all of which came together to make for a rough, forgettable experience. Genji Days of the Blade even though many probably haven't ever played Genji Days of the Blade, quite a few are most likely familiar with it. Why? That question can be answered with three words, giant enemy crabs. And you attack its weak point for massive damage. <clears throat> Sadly, the game itself wasn't nearly as memorable as the meme it inadvertently created at Sony's infamous 2006 E3 conference. Though it certainly looked fine, Genji was a derivative action game that often even failed at the fundamentals thanks to unintuitive controls and a bad camera. Mobile Suit Gundam Crossfire With most other games that we've mentioned on this list so far, we can point to at least a few things about them that are well done. Mobile Suit Gundam Crossfire, however, has no redeeming qualities and was by far the absolute worst PS3 launch title. Most of the times it didn't even run, what with being plagued with horrible bugs, AI glitches, and nasty frame rates. Even when it did work though, it didn't get much better, because not only was it an absolute eyesore, it was also a chore to play. How this game was allowed to be released is a mystery that will never be solved. NBA Live 14 Sports games probably have more trouble with console generation transitions than most other genres, and no game exemplifies that better than NBA Live 14. As the first NBA Live game in three years, it was expected to deliver, at the very least, a competent basketball sim. Instead, it was a complete dumpster fire. Everything on the court felt sloppy and unresponsive, the physics and animations were barely functional, and the game was ridden with glitches. And that's just the tip of the iceberg. Tony Hawk's Project 8 
Though Tony Hawk's Project 8 was a genuinely enjoyable skateboarding game on the Xbox 360, on all PlayStation formats, PS2, PSP, and PS3, for which it was a launch title, it was a significantly worse experience. A huge reason for that is the game's PlayStation versions lacked all online modes, which was particularly strange for the PS3 version since the game did have online on Xbox 360. On top of that, Tony Hawk's Project 8 also had a choppy frame rate on the PS3, making for for an even rougher experience. Untold Legends Dark Kingdom Untold Legends Dark Kingdom had the opportunity as an action RPG to be a favorite among the PS3's launch lineup, but rather than embracing the genre and all the ambitions that come with it, it instead chose to be something wholly forgettable. The game was fun enough at times, sure, but its combat was shallow and repetitive, while extreme linearity also hurt the experience. The fact that from a technical perspective it fell way below the mark for what was expected of a PS3 launch title did not improve matters at all. Orphan Scion of Sorcery Hardcore RPG fans could certainly have gotten at least some amount of satisfaction from the PS2 launch title Orphan Scion of Sorcery, but by and large it was an aggressively average game. Its story and characters weren't very well fleshed out, its combat was repetitive, and other issues such as poor voice acting and shoddy writing added further to the game's long list of problems. X-Squad EA's PS2 launch title X-Squad was by no means a terrible game. It could certainly provide flashes of enjoyment with its fast-paced action, but such moments were usually hampered with various issues big and small. From inconsistent AI to finicky controls, from bland levels to a noticeable lack of challenge, X-Squad's flaws added up to the extent that even though it may not have been a particularly bad game, it did end up getting completely forgotten. Evergrace Evergrace came out at a time when traditional RPGs were extremely popular in the industry, and as a functional RPG, many surely would have enjoyed it to some extent. But like a few other games on this list, though Evergrace wasn't a downright bad game, it was rarely anything more than average. Its visuals looked extremely dated, its combat frequently felt sluggish, and the story was rather plain. Put together, it was a serviceable but thoroughly forgettable game. Eternal Ring Alongside the aforementioned Evergrace, Eternal Ring was one of two From Software games to launch alongside the PS2, and by and large it was more or less just as disappointing. Eternal Ring certainly had some interesting ideas, some of which it implemented at least competently, but its negatives still outweighed the positives. The combat was bland, the story was uninteresting, and the dated visuals even called its value as a PS2 launch title into question. And that wraps it up. If you like what we are doing, please consider subscribing to our channel. And don't forget to switch on the bell notification icon. That way you will never miss out on any of our videos.